This is the first in a series of videos spread out over time, not all at once, about a deep dive of the Arduino Uno, which I have completely fallen in love with as an excellent beginner device. It has plenty of flaws, but as a beginner device, those flaws don't matter. You're not going to use it for advanced work. I have personally verified all the information in this video with my own genuine Arduino Uno Revision 3, that's the newest one. But Arduino is an open platform, so there are clones out there, and generally speaking, they're identical in they're going to work the same way, but I can't guarantee it. So the information here applies only to a genuine Arduino. The clone should work identically, but you might want to check it first. So the Arduino Uno has 20 standard I.O. pins. On the left side, you have six of what are called analog pins. They're actually digital pins that have added analog functionality because Arduino is great at naming things. And on the right side, you've got pins 0 through 13. These are labeled as digital pins. For the record, these are actually pins 14 to 19. A.O. through A5 are just aliases. So first we have pin 0 and 1. These are the pins that are used for serial. The Arduino Uno has a main processor and then it has a separate, smaller microcontroller just for serial. It's not built in. The Arduino Leonardo has a more advanced CPU with serial built in. But the Uno is still nicer because the chip is slotted. It's in a socket. So you can take it out and put another one in. Whereas the Leonardo is micro soldered. So zero and one are the transmit and receive for serial. If you're not using the serial port, you can use these pins for other things. Because normally you plug in the USB and you upload sketches, you do diagnostic serial monitor and stuff. But if you never turn serial on, if you reboot the thing and your code never turns on serial, you can use pin 0 and 1 just fine. But, first of all, they're connected in a weird way and there's resistors so you have to do shenanigans to get it to work right. It's not just pins like the rest of them. Also, you can't use them while testing because if you have it plugged into your computer, computer and you're programming and you want to test, well, you're already using pin 0 and 1 on your computer, so it's not like you can test that without unplugging and rebooting the whole thing. Also, you're going to forget and you're going to leave something low impedance plugged in while you're on USB and you're going to fry your transmit pin. You're going to forget. Also, from a code standpoint, you're going to write your code and you're going to forget that if you're using serial, you can't use pin 0 and 1 and you're going to go through hours of diagnostics trying to figure out what in the world's going on. So my advice is forget that pin 0 and 1 exists. 0 and 1, don't ever use them for anything whatsoever. That's my advice. So all of the remaining pins, 2 to 19, are digital pins. Some of the pins have analog functionality as well. Some of the pins have PWM functionality as well. But all of these function as digital pins. Using them as outputs, you use the pin mode output function. This is low impedance, so if you have something low impedance connected to it, it's going to fry, be careful. And then to set the output, you use digital write. You can say the words high or low, or you can say one or zero, as in the, the logic Boolean bits one or zero. Both of them work. I think true and false probably would work too, but I haven't tested that. I do believe in C that true is 1 and false is 0, but I'm not sure. And that's the extent of the output. It's pin mode and digital write. Pin 13 is special. Up here, pin 13, because it has an LED attached. So whatever output is set on pin 13, if it's high, then the LED will be on, and if it's low, the LED will be off. Even if there's nothing connected, you don't have to have anything plugged into pin 13. It'll turn the LED on and off. The bootloader does this, the bootloader blinks it a little bit, for fun, because there's a bootloader that runs before your program. But anyway, the LED lights up or dims out based on the output state of pin 13. And you can use this to, if you want to blink the LED or whatever, you don't need anything plugged in, you just have an LED right on there, you just turn it on and off, free LED. And as I mentioned, the pins can drive LEDs directly with the resistor, you know, like five volts, resistor, and LED, but don't have much current. I wouldn't go much over five milliamps. You can definitely go higher, but the entire Arduino is rated for something like 200 milliamps going through the entire thing, power draw, and each pin is rated for 40, but most people recommend 20. If you're going to drive LEDs with the pins, keep it low. So just don't try to drive bright LEDs. But anyway, now for input mode. You've got, for your pin mode, you've got input or input pull-up. It's just what it says on the tin. It's a pull-up resistor built into the chip. There's no pull-down mode, unfortunately. It's just, it's just high impedance input or high impedance input with pull-up resistor. Like I mentioned before, the bootloader uses pin 13 
All of the pins are normally in input mode, so it's safe to have stuff plugged in when it's booting up, but not pin 13, because the bootloader blinks the LED, which means it's in output mode, and you can short out pin 13 if you have something supplying power. If you have an output plugged into pin 13, when the bootloader flashes it, you might fry pin 13. If you aren't using pin 13 and you want to disable the LED, you can set it to output mode low, digital write low, and that will turn off the LED. It's not going to use any power because there's nothing connected. Or if you want the LED to always be on, because it's going to be on normally, but it's, it's floating because normally it's in input mode after the bootloader runs. So it's floating, so it might flash randomly as power draw changes. But if you put it in input pull-up mode, then it will guarantee to stay on, or you can set output to high. Either one is exactly the same. Just don't leave it on regular input mode. If you don't care, don't even worry about 13. You can let it flash randomly. Now there's info on the internet that indicates that there are shenanigans you have to do with pull-down resistors and values and such to use pin 13 as an input. On the Arduino Arduino Uno revision 3, that's not true. On the current version, I, somebody on the internet said it was buffered. I haven't confirmed that, but I have tested. You don't need to do anything. You, you can use a pull-up resistor, you can use a pull-down resistor, you can use neither, and it works in all modes. So on the genuine Arduino Uno revision 3, which is the one you'll get right now if you buy it, they're all revision 3 now, is pin 13 has an LED attached, but it doesn't affect anything. If you have it in output mode, the LED will match the output. If you have it in input mode, the LED will match the input. If it's floating input, it'll match whatever it happens to match. But you can use it like any other digital pin without shenanigans on this board. And the only difference between 13 and any other pin is the LED follows the voltage. Pins 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, and 11 are PWM. Pins 3, 9, 10, and 11 are rated at 490 hertz. I measured on my oscilloscope and got about 488, so that's pretty good. Pins 5 and 6 are rated at 980 hertz. Now, the issue with 5 and 6 is that the way that they are engineered, they are affected by the timer that's used for other things. 3, 9, 10, and 11 are independent, and the PWM just runs. But 5 and 6, whatever you're doing with the timer, whatever it's doing with the timer, can slightly, slightly, slightly change the duty cycle. And also, I measured 968 hertz. It's a, it's a very loose measurement. The higher the duty cycle, the more accurate it is on pins 5 and 6. If you have a very low duty cycle, like 0 to 10 out of 255, then that's what the spec says is the most inaccurate. And it specifically mentions that if you turn it to 0, that may not be off. Because 0 duty cycle is supposed to be always low, but it may not quite be. So... If you want faster frequency, PWM, and you don't mind if it's not perfect, you can use 5 and 6 just fine. But if you want more accurate PWM at a lower frequency, you can use 3, 9, 10, or 11. And you simply issue the command analog right. As I mentioned, the Arduino company is really good at naming things, which means they're really not. It's not analog, it's PWM. I get that they're trying to dumb it down. This is probably the one thing that I really disagree with, because it's not. You can take PWM and make an analog voltage out of it, which I'm going to do in a future video. But analog right is PWM. Try to remember that. You don't have to set pin mode with analog right. It automatically does it. There's an implicit pin mode in there. So you can just turn on PWM and you're done. Finally, the fun stuff, the analog pins. They are analog input only. Analog right is PWM. There is no analog out on the Arduino Uno unless you convert the PWM to an analog voltage. Pins 14 through 19 are analog in. It is a 10-bit resolution, which means 0 to 1023 is what the analog read function gives you. Now, what does that number mean? There's a voltage range. Over here is ground, which is going to be about 0 volts. Over here is a ref, which usually is 5 volts. The default is 5 volts, which is the power supply of the Arduino Uno. There is an analog reference command that you can use. If you use default, it sets it to 5 volts, the supply. You can say internal. The CPU has its own voltage reference, which is 1.1 volts. 
The idea of the reference is you can't measure anything below or above. You can't measure a negative voltage and you can't measure anything above the reference voltage. The reason you would want to change the reference voltage is resolution. If you have a thousand buckets that you can put a voltage in and it goes from zero to five volts, it's going to be so accurate. Five volts divided by a thousand is about five millivolts of error. But if you have 1.1 volts, but you're still dividing it into 1024 buckets, it's much more accurate per bucket. So that's why you would want to set your reference voltage to be at or just above the highest voltage you want to measure. That gives you the maximum accuracy. So you can use the internal 1.1 volt if you're measuring very small stuff. And then there's external. There's actually an AREF pin. So you can specify a voltage simply by putting a voltage on the AREF pin and using the analog reference command to say external. It cannot be higher than five volts. It, you're still limited to the power supply of the Arduino. So your reference voltage is still limited to five. So if you need five, just use the default. The other thing is when you issue the analog read command, the AREF pin is put in low impedance mode. It draws power because of the way that the ADC works in the CPU, in the microcontroller. So if you have it set on default or internal, and you have a voltage supplied, it's going to short the two together and that will be bad. So you always have to absolutely make sure that if you have external connected, that you also have it set on external before you analog read. You have to be very, very careful. Alternately, put a resistor. The spec recommends 5K resistance. I used 5.6K. It, I'm sure it doesn't really matter, but on the order of is good. I'd go with what the spec says. There is a 32K resistor in there. And when you connect your resistor, such as 5K, it is a voltage divider. So you're going to get a reduction in the actual reference voltage it sees. And the formula is just, my blue pen has died. That's not the formula. The formula is 32K ohms over 32K ohms plus your resistance, whatever resistor you used, it's just a ratio, times Vn equals A ref. So pick your resistor near 5K, calculate this, and you get the voltage that it's actually going to see. Or you could do, you know, divide this over, and then you can figure out what voltage you need to supply to get that reference voltage. Or you could also change the value of the resistor to change the divider. But this way, you can use the internal, you can use the default, you can use the external all at the same time. And you can switch between them all you want if you need that. The only reason I could think you'd want to do that is if you have different analog pins connected to different scales of voltage. So one pin might be connected to a one volt peak source and the other might be connected to a four volt peak source. I mean, that would do it, but there you go. So that's how you use the analog reference. By default, if you do nothing, it just measures zero to five volts. According to the spec, do not use analog read if the pin is in pull-up mode or output mode because you're going to get a wrong reading. Also, if you switch the pin mode or the analog reference, you need to issue the analog read command a couple times to kind of flush it out because it uses a capacitor. So if you, if you switch the modes, if you change voltages around and then you analog read immediately, you're gonna get a wrong value most likely. You'll get a wrong value because the capacitor is gonna be using the wrong voltage and so forth. So whenever you make a change, just like analog read, analog read, and that'll force it to charge and discharge and then it'll be back to normal. But always switch the pin into input mode or don't do anything because it's going to be an input mode by default. So if you never change the mode, it's already fine. And if you're continuously monitoring the analog voltage, if you're just doing analog read, analog read in a loop, obviously you don't need dummy reads, you're just gonna read anyway. So your results will have a wrong spike, but then it'll be back to normal. But the final trick is what does zero to 1023 mean? Well, let's do something different. Let's say we only have a two bit resolution. Two bits is four buckets, zero, one, two, and three, where zero volts is here, and here's a ref. So when you call analog read with this two bit resolution, you're gonna get a zero, one, two, or three. So the voltage can be anywhere in this range. Imagine, just pick a random, random number anywhere. Pick one here and here and here and here and here and just have a whole bunch of random numbers all over. You've just got voltages everywhere, evenly distributed, because you, whatever, you're measuring noise. But the point is, the voltage can be anywhere. So any voltage that's here 
or here, or here, or here, or here, it gets rounded down into this bucket. All of these voltages will be listed as zero. All of these voltages will be listed as three. It's a linear scale. So in effect, it's truncating. So, you know, you might have zero, one, two, three are your values. So this, you know, you could have 2.49, but it only gives you an integer, so you just get two. That's what it is. So on average, if you imagined every single possible voltage, every single voltage in zero, if you take the average, it's going to be right in the middle. If you average all of the possible voltages in a bucket, it'll be the middle of the bucket, because that's how means work. So the formula to actually give you the closest voltage, you know, not losing the precision, but the closest voltage within the precision available is the A ref voltage over 1024. This divides the voltage into however many buckets. Then you multiply that because that's the size of one bucket. The value you got from analog read is how many buckets are to the left of you. See, like, this is bucket zero, this is bucket two, there's two buckets to the left. So we are at bucket two, plus 0.5, half a bucket. So this is the width of a bucket. We go over this many buckets and add another half a bucket. And that's going to get us, for anything from 2.0 to 2.9999999999, 2 we're going to say 2.5. So this will give us 2.5, and then whatever the reference voltage is. Remember your point zero here, when you're actually coding it, because... Well, let's not mince words. The C language is stupid. If you have integers, like what is what is one over a hundred? What is one over a hundred at zero? If you're doing integer math, and it's the same thing here because you've lost the decimal point. It takes away the decimal point. So you could have, you know, you could say five divided by ten twenty four, and if you don't have the point zero, you know, a ref, you'd say five point oh. If you don't have the point oh, or you don't issue a specific cast to float or something, then you're going to get zero, and you're always going to read zero voltage no matter what. A sensible language would actually not let you do this. It would not let you mix ints and floats like this, but people who code in C and people who invented C cared a whole lot more about practicality and making it as fast as possible, and if you make a mistake, they're like, well, get good. It's like the Dark Souls community. The C and C++ community are basically the Dark Souls community. If you make a mistake, no matter how bad the language is, it's still your fault. But anyway, that's what you do. Whatever reference voltage you're using, 5.0, 1.1, or whatever you put in, accounting for the resistor if you have one, divide by the resolution. It's this many buckets, and then go over an extra half bucket. And this gives you the analog voltage you read. That concludes how the digital and analog pins work on the Arduino Uno. I will be doing many more videos on this device, though they're going to be in the future because I'm going to do a topic at a time, like when I start doing interchip serial, you know, whenever. But this will get you going. This is almost everything anyone ever uses the Arduino for anyway. Digital in, digital out, analog in, PWM out. That's 99% of Arduino programs anyway. So that's it for now. So I'll be seeing you.